Good day folks and welcome to the IT way. My name is Joan and if today this is your first time having a security appliance and a Max or any system rack device, this is your place to go. We're going to take a device out of the box, we're going to connect it, we're going to deploy it, put it in the network and then we're going to configure the basics that you really need just to get a start. These steps can be applied to any MX, any secured appliance that you have. You can use the MX64, 65, or 67, 68, or the big ones, the MX100, the MX250, and 450. So it's the same principles because we're gonna do the basics ones for all of them. We're gonna divide the video in three main aspects. So as you can see here, we're gonna add the device to the network. We're gonna make it sure that their devices are online. And after that, we're gonna make the basis configuration for you to go and to get a start. If you have the device on your hands and you don't know how to put it or create the network on the dashboard, or even add the device to the, your dashboard or your organization. So you can go here in this video, I can show you how to create your organization, how to do the first steps, and how to add your devices with your serial number or your order in your dashboard. After that, you can come back to this video to create a network with us. And then after finishing this video that you have the basic configuration, if you'd like to know more about more features, how to configure them, any troubleshooting tips, or any way to automate your network, feel free to go to this link where you can see the playlist of the Cisco Meraki training to go from here to zero in no time. So I'm posting weekly videos on how to configure features, troubleshooting tips, and how to automate the network on your please. So if you're more interested, just go there and subscribe below, and we're going to see more videos coming. All right, so let's get our Cisco Meraki MX and let's try to configure it. Let's see. And here we are in our organization. Our organization name is the IT Way. I have several networks. Our device is already claimed in our inventory. So if you don't know how to create your organization, create your account, or add your device to the inventory, you can take a look at this, and then you can take a look to this video first for you to have all the devices in your inventory first. So after having that, you can come back to us. And here we're gonna start is having this device already claimed, and then we're gonna add it to the network. Now here you can see that my device is in, the, is in an inventory, and there is not, network assigned to it. So I'm gonna go and create my network. If I go here, I'm gonna put Meraki Stack as the network name. Right now, just have the security appliance. We're gonna see in the later videos how we can add the NG, the switch, the access point, the camera. But right now, we just have the security appliance. So we can select security appliance and we're gonna select the device that we want. So we're gonna say MX68. This is our device. Check the box. I'm gonna create a network. So with this, we're gonna bind and this secret appliance to the Meraki Stack network. After that, we can see the Meraki Stack network name in the drop down of the network list. The first thing that we're gonna see or we're gonna go is to this appliance status page. If you want to know a little bit more about the details of what is this look like or the meanings of all these tabs you can go to this video that is gonna be an overview of the appliance status. Since this device is offline, you can see that it's never connected to the Meraki cloud. That always happens when you move to a new organization and a new network. Even though the device could be connected already, this is gonna stay for a while. Here, we're gonna change the name to MX68. And then now we know that it's inside of the network that we want. When you power the MX on and you connect the internet cable into the internet interface, you're gonna see the LED light in front to change the colors, the rainbow colors, and eventually it's gonna stay in the white color. If it's white, based on the KV, you can see that it is working because it's talking to the dashboard and it's synced with the configuration that you already did on the organization on the dashboard. We're going to start creating even the networks, the VLANs and everything without the device even plugged in. So we're going to do this test now. We're going to go to address and VLANs. And what we want for this network is just a simple network. We're going to create three different VLANs for our environment. We're going to check this box to see the different VLANs. And we're going to use the first one. The first one is going to be for internal traffic. 
So we're going to use this for all our internal clients in the network. This is going to be the subnet, the MXIP, and the VLAN ID. We're going to create a next one, which is going to be the servers. So your cluster of server subnet. We're going to use the dot one as the max gateway and the VLAN two. So this is the subnet that the max is going to use for this VLAN. This is the MXIP. Sometimes you can say as a gateway. So this is going to be the gateway of all the clients under that subnet. And this is the VLAN ID. So right now we're not going to put any group policies. So you can leave it like that. We're going to create a third one. This third one is going to be for guests. We're going to put number three, the same thing for the gateway, number three, and the VLAN three. Awesome. So after having the three up subnets, now we haven't considered what are going to be the ports that we're going to configure. And we're going to check that in the next video where we're going to start talking about what are the ports that we're going to use and what is the configuration of each port when we're going to start connecting the switch, the camera, the access points, and so on. So, so far, we just need these three subnets and we're going to save the changes. Right now, what we want based of this description is the guest network. We're going to try to block the access from all the guest clients to either the internal or the servers. To do so, we need a firewall rule. So here we can go to the firewall section. And here you have the options to make that happen. What we will do is block any traffic coming from VLAN 3 to VLAN 1 or VLAN 2. I'm going to try to put as detail as possible so you can follow the, tra the traffic flow. We're going to deny any traffic coming from this subnet, which is the guest subnet, destined to the other two subnets. Comment will be guest to internal or servers. With that, we can even save it. And now we know that any traffic that is going to be sent from the guest VLAN to either the internal VLAN or the server VLANs, it's going to be completely blocked. The next aspect as well that we have to consider is the DHCP. That is going to depend on the configuration that you have on your home or your location on the office. If you now use the MX as a DHCP server for all your VLANs, this is coming as default. So here you see the three different options and it's already running the DHCP server as a default for the three VLANs. In case that you have your own DHCP server, you can change that to relay DHCP server to another server and put your list of DHCP. Uh, server's IP address here. Since I don't have any DHCP server, I'm going to run it like that. If you have some specific devices that you want to reserve those IP addresses, you can have it here and you have fixed IP addresses here. So right now, since I want to have it as default, I'm not going to make any changes. And after a few minutes that you leave the MX connected, if it gets a valid IP address and it's able to reach out to the cloud and sync, you will see something like this. If you're still seeing this port that is lit up and this part is active, but you still see the banner that says that has never connected to the Meraki cloud, you can refresh the page and it's gonna come back as a green like this one. Here we can see that this is the internet connection that is connected, the one one is active, and the uplink, if we can click here, we're gonna see that it's dynamic and it got this IP address. If you wanna change to a static IP address, you can do so here. And now we have all the information that we need. The MX is up and running. We have a visibility of all the ports that are connected. We have the configuration of the three VLANs. So now every time that we can connect one device here, if you want to connect the device to one specific VLAN, we just have to change it here. So you can usually select either trunk or access and select the VLAN that you want. So if I know for sure that I'm going to connect a server or a client, for example, in this port, I'm going to use this access port like that. If I'm going to use here and connect a server in this one, I can put it that way, make it access and put servers. I'm going to start con connecting devices and computers. And based on the configuration that we have in the firewall section, we know for sure that the guest clients are not going to be able to talk to the internal 
or the server's clients or subnets. And that's it. With all that information is basically what you need to make a basic configuration and make sure that the device is healthy, is strong and stable with whatever you need at the first steps to configure this a security appliance. If you'd like to know a little bit more about all the features that we, you can configure with this MX, since this is MXW, you can configure the wireless settings. If you'd like to know more about what kind of configuration you can have in the SSIDs, you can go and click that card. It's going to give you the whole video about this kind of configuration. The same thing for content filtering. If you want to know more about how to configure content filtering, you can go here and it's going to give you as well a video with more details about this kind of feature. The same situation goes to the side-to-side -side VPN. If you'd like to know more about how to configure the side-to-side -side VPN, even is it auto VPN with Meraki devices or a non-Meraki device with a remote, with a non-Meraki VPN peers here, you can go to that card and you can find all the information that you want. And that's how you configure the Cisco Meraki MX as the basic configuration for you to start with. In the next videos, you're going to see that we're going to use the switch, Meraki switches and Meraki access points. And ultimately, we're going to use the Meraki cameras. So stay tuned if you have the other devices so you can see how to configure the whole stack on your home or your office. So if you need to know more troubleshooting tips on how to make sure that your device is reachable or how to troubleshoot when the device is unreachable, go to here. We have the Cisco Meraki training guide for you then to go over it. And we're posting weekly videos every time. So that's how you configure it in the Meraki way. See you the next one.